Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at DisneyPlus.com and I'm here with Dr. Alex who's working on the brand new doc, um, National Geographic series for Disney Plus called Secrets of the Octopus, which is coming out on Earth Day. So could you give us a little bit of a brief introduction to what the series is about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the series is really going to illuminate, I think, the life of an octopus, this incredible creature that lives in every ocean uh, on our planet. And it's going to showcase the octopus's vulnerability, uh, their shape-shifting abilities, their intelligence, and even their capacity to feel emotions. And so I really hope that it's going to provide our audience with a completely different perspective to the octopus. That's cool. Um, so how long have you been working on this series? So uh, the team actually came to me about two and a half years ago. And so it's been a huge labor of love. Uh, you know, I think we spent over a thousand as a team collectively over a thousand hours underwater. Uh, we went to multiple countries. We really focus on 12 different species out of the 300 species of octopuses. Uh, so it's just so exciting that it's going to be premiering in 10 days time. It's, it's, I'm really, like, I've, I, I really enjoyed the series. Um, um, and just kind of learning more about octopus um, is actually, I remember as a kid seeing one um, when I was um, snorkeling off of Spain and it was like the first time I'd seen one. So been sort of interested in it ever since. And so what was your favourite octopus or species out of the ones that you filmed with? Oh, that's an impossible question. <laughs> I love all of them. Um, no, I mean, the two highlights I think were the day octopus. So Scarlet is the individual day octopus that I bond with. And then also the coconut octopus. Uh, they're so tiny, but they just have so much character. Yeah, and as you said, you, you I went all over the world um, sort of filming it. Kind of which sort of location was sort of for you the best one to go to? Maybe something you hadn't been before or one of your favourites. What, what's been your favourite so far? Um, oh, the... I mean, I've been to the Great Barrier Reef before where day octopuses live, but it's just such a beautiful underwater landscape uh, and it was incredible to go and spend time with these day octopuses I mean octopus species can be notoriously shy but day octopuses they're kind of the performance performers out of the bunch and so to spend so much, many intimate moments with them where they just quickly grew to trust me uh, and we had interactions where they'd reach out and touch me, particularly Scarlett, and she would let me swim alongside her. And then each time I returned, she really appeared to recognise me quickly. Um, so that was just, yeah, an incredible location for me. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's up there because uh, I've been lucky enough to do some scuba diving off of the Great Barrier Reef as well. So it's like... Yeah, there's so many scenes in this series. It's just like that just looks just like amazing. Um, so how many dives did you do all together on while making the show? I don't think I, I can keep <laughs> count. Uh, I had about five, and and the team actually went to a lot of places without mm. me, and they would spend longer. So they might spend six weeks at a location, and I would go for two weeks. But we would dive. Yeah, two to three times a day and a lot of the team the, I was the only one that was on uh not on rebreathers uh, so they were able to spend two to three hours under there um I did too because I'm just I'm very I don't know I consume very small amounts of air but we would spend a lot of time underwater and come up very pruney I'll be, I, I always used to get into trouble because I used to be sucking air in way too much. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, because you also went to Vancouver and up into sort of um, sort of Alaska area. Um, what was that like for you, obviously, being from Australian waters, being very different, I would imagine? Oh, I sadly didn't actually get to go oh. to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so Crystal was the uh, diver that was interacting with the um, giant Pacific octopus, and I'm so sad I wasn't there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's definitely on my list. They're the largest octopus species and I would love to go and interact, but there were other really, you know, completely different territories that I went to like Indonesia, where we went to see the mimic octopus and the, um, coconut octopus. And that landscape is completely different from what the Great Barrier Reef looks like. It's a barren landscape. And so the octopuses perform really different behaviors to try and, um, master that very different environment. 
And obviously you mentioned all the different kind of species and stuff. Um, was there anything that you kind of learned while making this series that you hadn't um, known before? Yeah, there was, I mean, there's stuff, there's secrets in it that we, that I had read about and I was really excited to witness firsthand. And then there were just revelations that we'd never, ever uh, heard about. So we found our courtship in day octopuses and we'd never uh, observed or, you know, read about courtship behaviours in octopuses. And so this is where the male is doing this beautiful, elaborate dance with flashes of colour and different arm postures. And it was just so nice to witness him serenading um, this female. And then also the tool use that we see uh, in the coconut octopus. I had read about defensive tool use where the coconut octopus carries around two halves of a coconut, like a mobile home. But when we got there, we got more than what we bargained for because um, we witnessed the coconut, this coconut octopus being threatened by a manta shrimp, this very angry sh shrimp that has a very uh, it, swift punch. It can even punch through aquarium glass. And just in that moment, we witnessed this octopus have an idea and she, you know, scampered over to pick up this shell and she ended up using it as a shield to defend herself against this angry mantis shrimp and it was just I was so blown away by the level of intelligence that I was seeing that I was screaming underwater yeah it's um, that was definitely one of those the other one as well for me was like realizing just how short their lifespans were because I I wrongfully assume that they live much longer than because of their intelligence kind of thing but um that was definitely something I, I picked up from there um I was gonna say, you've worked on loads of amazing shows in the past uh when going through your resume what was it like kind of jumping on to, in front of the camera for this one <laughs> It was a steep learning curve, I think. Like you said, I've been involved in different natural history films, but always behind the camera. Uh, so this was a def definitely a new experience. Um, but I had great mentorship around me. And so I quickly learned um, how, yeah, what was important, how to engage with an audience. I hope so anyway. Um, and it was really fun. It was really fun learning a new skill. Yeah. Um, also, you got to... Um work with James Cameron on this uh, series because uh, he's involved as an executive producer and his big segment at the end. What was it like working with him? Because um, obviously, you know, he kind of a legend in, in, the, in the movie world. Well, yes. Well, James Cameron is a true <laughs> ambassador of our oceans and it was fantastic. Uh, there's kind of a behind the scenes section at the end of episode three where um, we sit down and go through some of the footage that we uh, collected on the series and just having his input but also his response to that footage was really special. Uh, you know, he revealed that octopuses have inspired some of his own characters in his Hollywood films, um, so that was really exciting. Uh, you know, there's a, sex there's a sequence where we show an octopus potentially dreaming and he was sharing that a lot of his dreams have inspired some of his own films. Uh, so that was really special. But also just having his overarching uh, creative direction in this series just make, made it pop, I think. And, and you'll be able to see the quality uh, of the film. Uh, it, it's just next level. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing. I mean, like along with like Planet Earth and like all, all those kind of shows, but the, 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 it's just beautiful scenery of just, and, and just, it just looks amazing. And like you said, the, the thing when um, the octopus was dreaming and kind of going through those different ones, it kind of, again, reminded, and you mentioned in the show about reminding you of your dog kind of, <laughs> just, it was, it was just amazing to see that. And you just wouldn't expect to see that from, from an octopus. Mm. Um, but with the series coming out on Disney Plus around the world on Earth Day, how does it feel knowing that kind of octopuses are kind of getting their big, this is their big moment on the, on Disney Plus globally? How does that feel? Oh, it feels incredible. You know, when I started working with these creatures 15 years ago, a lot of people would respond with, why? You know, they're slimy and grotesque. And I think now we're coming into the golden age of octopus. Um, and the series showcases their vulnerability, their intelligence, their emotions. And so they're really this compelling ambassador to make people care about our blue planet. And so that I think it's fantastic that it's coming out on Earth Day because there's a huge connection there. 
yeah. As I said, it's um, Secrets of the Octopus is coming out on Disney Plus around the world on Earth Day on Monday, the 22nd of April. So check it out. Also, you can find the whale documentary and the elephant documentary from previous years. But again, thank you, Alex, for taking your time out to speak to me today. Um, I said I really enjoyed the series. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I, I really did like it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Roger.